My name is Hudson. Welcome back to Slay the Spy, where we're coming back at you with another one of those silent runs. Just means from uh, this point on in the run, I'm not going to speak, so uh, let's do that. Sure, that'll be a riveting episode. Oh, wow, we don't even have a Nyaz bonus to start the episode off. Ooh, that's just how good I am at the game. Don't even need it. I'm a little cocky here, obviously, because, oh. I must have decided last time I played the silent that I wasn't going to need the Nyaz bonus, and as a result, I have not let myself take it. I think I'll go with the enemies in extra combats and go for a free elite. If I haven't got any normal enemies fought by this space, I might duck inwards and then go for this as my first elite, because then I can get three early rests, although I do have to fight another elite later on. Three early rests is three early upgrades as far as I'm concerned. So the problem with the escape plan on the first floor is that it makes it really... It, it's not really difficult, but it, it, it is not a great card to take into the gremlin knob fight. All other situations, it's fine, though. Upgrade a neutralized, thank you. That is a large amount less damage we'll be taking. Ooh, remove a card from the deck. Hell yes. Uh, let's remove a strike right now. Upgrade two cards randomly. Neato burrito. So we get our first free elite. Still haven't got a deck decided. Do I take a poison stab? Oh, I don't want to. But I haven't got a deck archetype yet. I need some damage. All right. All y'all out there that say that I never take poison stab, watch this run. I have done it before, by the way. Every time someone says, you never take Poison Stab, I immediately think, wait a second, that's not true. Like, maybe 10 runs ago, I said, hey, it's time to give Poison Stab a try, and then took a bunch of Poison Stabs and died. I'll take that Noxious Fumes, though, because you see a Noxious Fumes, you take a Noxious Fumes, especially in a deck that already tends slightly defensive. Send Tending Apostle, the first team will lose HP each combat, draw three cards. Um, now let's start upgrading defensive cards. Noxious Fumes plus upgrading defensive cards puts you in a good position. Okay. I really want to play the Noxious Fumes, but I think I can get through this fight without it. Well. Fine. Stop attacking, Acid Slime! What are you doing? At the very least, we're full defending, but also... There you go. Served those just desserts. I'll take absolutely none of those. Go for the Emerald Elite. I do want another rest, and shops don't mean much to me right now, so sure. Okay. Not just use first hand. Damn. I'm actually considering whether I Gambler's Brew every card except for Survivor to try and find that Noxious Fumes as soon as early as... Yeah, I'm doing it as early as possible. And obviously we keep the Survivor because it's a single card to fully defend myself. I mean, it's great in this position. Okay, I'm almost certainly going to be using the Skill Potion looking for a defensive card this turn. We don't find one. I could take the distraction to try and generate one. Okay. It's a defensive card. I mean, look. Asked and answered, frankly. I take one damage this turn, so I get to draw all of my extra cards. Yeah, there's the survivor. Okay, we're going to have that sentry in the front line down... And now we only take a maximum of 10 damage a turn. We might get out of this combat having only taken one damage. Sure, we use two potions, but we're already full up on potions. It's not like I was missing out that much. This is fine. Although I probably should have weakened the sentry in the front line because I can't guarantee that I get to full defend this turn. Although I can, I couldn't have guaranteed that. Whereas I could have last turn guaranteed that, the, that I had full defense because the sentry wasn't going to harm me. All right. That's us done. What a great elite combat for me. What a great emerald elite combat for me, nonetheless. Furthermore, there's another word I'm looking for there. Uh, you can now become weakened in the ginger. 
Do I take a deflect here? Yes. I'll take one and upgrade it. Because backflip is very, very, very common a pickup for this style of deck. I'll be weakened next turn, so that fat gremlin's gonna be a problem. I think I have to gamblers brew a bunch of these cards looking for two attacks to take out the sneaky gremlin. So that's 12 damage this turn on the sneaky gremlin with the poison stab, and then I can neutralize and then single defend. Okay. Oh no, I can't be weakened. That's fine. I still didn't want to take that 10 damage that turn. So now our primary target is obviously the Gremlin Wizard. And weakening that target also makes a bunch of sense because next turn it is going to try and deal its damage. Here it comes. And yes, that is a Millhouse Mana Storm right there. I played a lot of, uh, lot of uh, that game in my time. You know, that game that I can't remember the name of right now that's having a huge expansion release. I'm actually very, very closely watching that expansion. Interested to see how it goes. Fruit juice, gain 5 max HP. Lovely. Well, eight plans make sense for a style of deck like this. Uh, I mean, holding a card at the end of each of our turns is effectively increasing the amount of cards that we have each turn which makes the zero cost cards in our deck like neutralize and deflect escape plan is true zero cost because it replaces itself as a card so it doesn't really count towards the point i'm currently making uh but it helps offset the card cost of those so sure hell we're early enough that i'll actually even get a really early upgrade on it as well because there's no other great priority oh what a great what a great opening turn for us but yeah, there was no, no other great priority in that opening hand. Uh, sucks to go by the survivor here. Ouch. That's some damage. Okay, so the enemy takes 14 damage. 14 damage takes him down to 74. Four, 70, sorry, 74, 73. 73 is enough to split them, so I do need to start attacking this turn. Let's hold on to a defend and a slimed. I'm going to want to burn those slimes out of the deck. Now, I can't be weakened, so targeting the acid slime is actually wrong here. Usually it's correct to target the Acid Slime first because not being weakened helps you deal enough damage to split these enemies. But not here. Go, I, so, because I'm frail, I can only defend for 6 this turn. The incoming damage is 32, 36, 36. Right? So, that means that I need to split a target this turn. There's just no two ways around that one. So, I can deal a total of 12, 21, 25 to a single target. 25 plus the 5 that you currently already have on you is 30. You split 15 apiece. I'd also like to neutralize the back line if I can and then just all strike the front line. So, what's that? That's 21, 21, 5, 26. Takes you down to 19. Yeah, I'm safe with that. Well, I say safe. I'm okay with that. I have a lot of stacks of vulnerability, so I'm basically never not going to be vulnerable in this combat. Okay. Things are starting to get a lot cushier for us. Backline is very likely to split in time for me. Right, what, you're nine? So nine down from there takes you to 26. 26 is actually above your split value as well. Oh, that's not great for me. Well. We can have some healthy acid slimes here. That's exactly what I was worried about. The healthy acid slimes suddenly turning around and dealing a bunch of damage to me. 
Well. Oh, come on. Really? <sighs> yeah, the fact that they decided to attack both turns as much as they possibly could have is garbage. That sucks. <sighs> At the very least, now we get to start with a Meow's bonus, which I actually am probably going to use on Meow's Lament, which would have been on offer regardless. Uh, it's like an early bouncing blast to try and help me decide some stuff about this deck, remove a strike because the bouncing blast provides us some damage. Bullet time? Well laid plans. Well, those go together like punch and pie. In that they both start with the same first letter. I'm not familiar with the origin of that phrase, or if I've accidentally just made it up myself. Uh, bullet time, though. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of very expensive poison cards I'm going to want to include in this deck, so having an early bullet time helps me justify the costs of them. Well, Deflect obviously doesn't make too much sense here. I'll take a Poison Stab. Let's go. Don't be a fight. Don't be a fight. It is a fight. Yay. Regen Pot as well as a bunch of cards I'm not going to take here. I would upgrade the Bullet Time, but since I don't have any draw cards, I don't cast anything before I play the Bullet Time anyway. Oh, this is going to be an awful combat for us. Right. Take my 7 this turn, and then my, yeah, 27 this turn. Yikes. Did you have to? Just checking. Letter opener. Every time you play 3 skills in a single turn, deal 5 damage to all enemies. I'll take another poison stab. You know what? Fine. Guess that's how we go. Acrobatics also was a reasonable choice there. Bottled Flame, upon pickup, choose an attack, start each combo with that in your opening hand. That's almost always going to be neutralized for us. Transform a card. Probably another strike. These poison stabs are just mega upgraded strikes for us, I guess, at this point. Finisher. Yikes. I do want to go for another Elite. Yeah, guaranteeing the weakness on the enemy on turn one, that's what the neutralizer is in the first hand for, can be extremely important. I've also got to remember that even if I don't need the excess defense, I should still play uh, any excess skills of mine just for the sake of the letter opener. Footwork. Leg sweep is incredible, but footwork is foundational to so many types of decks. Hey, decks. Uh, what do I get here? Bane is a lot of damage for us. Doppelganger means that I would have a really large hand a lot of the time with bullet time in it. So Doppelganger can set up for some ridiculous turns, but Bane can deal some ridiculous damage. I think I'll take the Doppelganger, actually. It's on sale. I've got some cards on sale for... Mm. Mm. Just good, good, good. Three skills in a single turn. Got to make sure every single time I have the opportunity in this combat I deal three skills in a single turn because that's 15 damage overall. Well, it protects me for seven to play the defend, but it protects me for 10 to use the finisher for the kill, so. No brainer right there. Three skills in a single turn, as well as an extra draw next turn. Yeah. Hell, we might even be able to take down the sentry next turn, depending on our draw. Finisher plus two attacks would do it, but... What are the odds of getting that? Three skills? Uh, okay. 
I clearly needed to be more clear about that. Three skills that I can cast. Come on, defense with his hand. So that's a no on the defense with his hand then? Prayer wheel, normal enemies drop an additional card reward as well as backflip. <sighs> Beautiful. Yeah, I'll anger them. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to use the energy potion this turn because neutralize, strike, poison, stab, right? So we get nine, nine, we get 18 damage on a single target as well as two next turn, so 20. So I only need four damage on a single target to kill it. Or I could split it up entirely. Like I could focus neutralize on the backliner and then all of the other ones on someone else. In fact, that's almost certainly what I do. So it's neutralize goes on the backliner. And then the ones that buff, obviously I really need to start working on. Do I go Survivor Doppelganger or do I go Footwork Doppelganger? I think I go Survivor Doppelganger. It's not extremely unlikely I now get, yep, yeah, beautiful, out of this combat having taken no damage. There we go. I felt that was pretty likely, which is one of the reasons I took this combat. Another one being that lowering the incoming damage of vulnerability from the odd mushroom when vulnerable take 25% more damage rather than 50 is incredibly important to a deck like this. We'll take the daily poison, obviously there. Uh, 22. Okay, 22. So it is current HP divided by 12 plus 1, right? And the division is flawed, right? So division by 12, this only gets me 1. So it should be 2 by 12, uh, 2 by 6, sorry. So 12 damage on the second turn. Uh, full... Footwork needs to be upgraded. Doppelganger needs to be upgraded. Bullet time needs to be upgraded. Deadly poison needs to be upgraded. Neutralize needs to be upgraded. Neutralize desperately needs to be upgraded because if neutralize is upgraded here, I actually get to apply that weakness for the second turn. I really wanted to justify the doppelganger upgrade there so that I can play doppelganger on zero energy and still be happy with my turn, but this is too important. Yep, one by six incoming, and there's a bullet time, and we'll just stack some poison on the enemy as well. Oh. I couldn't have known I was going to have Doppelganger in the first hand, making my second hand pretty safe. Come on. I was hoping for defense there, but we're okay. I was worried about exactly that. Drawing the bullet time there. That's why we want the bullet time upgraded, so it lowers its cost to two, so that I can play a draw card, draw into the bullet time, and actually be happy about it, rather than go, oh, that happened. Okay. This deck is probably better than the previous one. All right, goodbye, Hexaghost, and hello to Corpse Explosion some AoE for this deck that does not yet have it. And more poison. Ooh, okay. Well, this is a little bit of an issue for us. So, obviously, Astrolabe transforming those three strikes and upgrading them, yeah, that could be really good for us. In fact, it's pretty good for us. I'd probably remove the finisher. Like, I didn't want the finisher in the deck to begin with, so. I'd be fine with that, but Ring of the Serpent. Replacing Ring of the Snake. The start of your turn, draw one additional card. That... That's... That's pretty damn good, though. Right? It helps me get my combo pieces together with the bullet time and all the other cards. Uh, but more than that, it could really help me get burst with other cards as well. And Burst is obviously a card that would go in this deck, especially because we already have the Doppelganger, but... But there are enough cards in this deck that support it that it would be extremely valuable for us. Start down here. 
So what uh, what line am I looking at? Probably starting here and then veering off to the left, because then I get rest, elite, rest, treasure, elite, question mark, normal combat, rest, elite, rest. Like, is pretty neat. That's unfortunate. Primarily, I want to target the back line here usually. But hey, if I can kill the frontliner quickly enough to prevent it from dealing its damage load next turn, then that's what I gotta go for. Oh, corpse explosion, of course. Bye. Forgot about that. Crippling Cloud, yes. Dodge and roll, we do have the footwork in the deck already, yeah. Uh, I don't want to lose all of my gold here, and because of the Corpse Explosion, we have a pretty good fight against these. It's also worth noting that it's not only because of the Corpse Explosion that we have a pretty good fight against these. One second. Just have to do some quick thinking. It could take me a while. I do the poison there so that I trigger the effect of the letter emperor and AoE. I'll also use the ancient potion here to prevent the backliner from affecting us with negative two decks. Mm hmm. Just in case I got a hand like this, actually. So that's some incoming damage. Weakening all of our targets for turn one is pretty damn important, though. Yeah. This is the hand that I was waiting for that sadly hadn't yet appeared, but we've got it here. Red Mask at the start of each combat, apply one weak to all enemies, as well as... Nope. Noxious Fumes, probably. Noxious Fumes, Crippling Cloud. Noxious Fumes, Crippling Cloud, and Piercing Whale? No. <laughs> it was the lowest priority, so I ordered them correctly. Ooh, okay. Bouncing Flask is lethal. Oh, Crippling Cloud Poison Stab. That'll get the job done, too. None of those. Another Bouncing Flask. I'm worried about my HP total here. I feel like it's possible we're not defensive enough and need some more upgrades, so I could veer out this side. But the problem there is I only literally get one upgrade. I get a bunch of question marks, but what events do I want on this floor, right? Not that many, if any. Not many, if any. Uh, so... I still don't want to do that line. The enemy's already weakened. I don't have to worry about Crippling Cloud here. Ooh. It's probably just Poison Stab Stab. At the very least, whenever we draw... Ooh, that's really bad. We can't kill this turn, so we just do that. At the very least, whenever we draw bullet time, we're in for a good turn, but ouch. That hurt a little bit. Yeah, I can't, I can't go for another elite. Not right now. It's just, that's just a bad idea. Catalyst? Mm, Pre-upgraded noxious fumes. No, we take too long to set up. We can't fight the... Moonlight. So I know that the next turn, the Chosen starts actually seriously attacking me. I can't artifact to prevent the incoming Vex. Sorry, it's actually a Hex, my bad. 
I think I have to use the energy potion this turn because I need both bouncing flasks and footwork out. I need to get as much early damage here as possible. And I need to be able to defend myself in as few cards as possible later. So 17, 17, 16. If I Noxious Fumes here, the Frontliner dies next turn. So I could have attacked them, or I could just do it that way. If I Corpse Explosion the Frontline, I deal 50 to the Backline here, so... It's a pretty good turn. All right, there we go. Could have been better, could have been worse. I will take my Fire Potion. There's a pre-upgraded Footwork versus a Burst, though. Fine. I'll rest again. And now we have an Elite that I can't mm, avoid. So what? Like, Poison Stab... Finish on three strikes. Yeah, I don't want to upgrade any of those. I'll take that Sapphire Key. At the very least, this target is weakened. We do have that on our side. That pre-upgraded footwork desperately wants to be played, though. Wait, what? Why did I have extra energy? Oh. I thought that Neutralize cost me an energy to play there for some reason. So I was like, there's no way I get to play my Bouncing Blast this turn. I do. I do get to do that. Mm, it's bullet time. It's an unfortunate hand for it to be in, but okay. It's a play a lot of cards I don't really care about there. Definitely have to weaken the enemy here. And hell, I'm being attacked next turn as well, so... Dodge and Roll is 14 block. Compared to the 8 of the other cards there. Yeah, I made the right decision to start avoiding elites at this point. I am saddened that that was the right decision, but hey... At least I made it. Mummified hand. Whenever you play a power card or random card in here. That's so important for us. Another bouncing flask is too much. <laughs> All right. We just need... We need safety now. We have a lot of powers in the deck. We can get all of that going on. Upgrade two random cards for 50 here. Easy. Corpse explosion. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Strike, obviously not. It's important that I target the frontliner here because they're the corpse explosion target. They have a higher max HP, so if they die to corpse explosion, the other target just will also die. Stop healing! No! This is why they needed to stop healing, because I'm now dead. 19, I can inflict. Oh, I'm I'm just not dead. Woo! Oh, wowzers. I need some defensive cards. I can't keep taking aggressive cards. I need to defend. Please don't attack next turn. Oh, that's an attack. I just have to defend as best I can. Hope I get a bouncing flask or two this turn. It's not a bouncing flask or two. I think I'm okay though. 
I hate this. This deck is so powerful, but we barely made it through the floor. Uh, it has to be Catalyst, obviously. Nothing. Uh, if I don't rest, I'm dead, so... We're so far behind the eight ball. We've spent so much of our time resting that we have a lot of very, very, very important to upgrade cards in the deck that just haven't been upgraded. They've been wholly, uh, wholly neglected. If we can get all of our footworks out, we're in a really good position. But that is one big if. Obviously, do it in that order. Don't know how I even considered the other. This is obviously a fight that I try and wait until Catalyst is lethal, and then pop that off. The enemy's probably attacking next turn. The nine poison is probably not as important as doppelganger providing us two extra cards and two extra energy next turn to try and defend. The question now is do I use another bouncing flask? And the answer now is no. Why would I? Okay. Double defend. Game. You're getting real close down to the wire on all of these. All right, at least Catalyst is definitely next hand, so we already have the champ killed. But it took luck. on full HP now. Explosive Potion as well as... We do play a fair couple cards. Is it ever correct to turn down after a Mitch? No, it isn't. It isn't here because, right, it just makes another card of mine cost zero, especially if it's at Nate. That just makes my opening hand a lot better. I can't take Hovering Kite and I also don't really need the energy from it. Uh, to take Pandora's Box here transforms five defense and three strikes, but... Those become defensive cards. I'm really happy about it. It's, it's very unlikely that five or more of them become cards that provide me block. And I need those cards to benefit from the footwork. So that's too risky to take. I have to take the tiny house. Lame. What an awful boss relic. So Time Eater has similar split shenanigans to the previous ones. Obviously, I was desperately hoping for Donu and Decker here. That would have been the uh, boss de jour. Okay, so let's have a look at the elites. There is no path that avoids all elites. Here, here, this one funnels into an elite, right? So there's no path that avoids all elites. So if there is no path that avoids all elites, what is the fewest? I can take only one with an early shop and two early rests, giving me the ability to start doing some upgrading. I'm all aboard that life. Okay. If I play the Noxious Fumes first, two thirds of the time it hits one of my two cost cards, and then I can play the other two cost card as well. Hit Finisher. Of course it hit Finisher. Why would it not hit... So lame. Sure, they're all dead now, but I had to take 16 damage to get here. Well laid plans, obviously. Deflect, obviously. No, acrobatics. I still don't have an energy relic, right. Ooh, that makes acrobatics harder to play. Because unless I am playing it in the same hand as bullet time, no, I don't want it. So I'll take the deflect. Well laid plans. Well laid plans can hold bullet time or it can hold 
uh, Catalyst. Both really good pickups for it. I don't think I'm going to be in the fight long enough for the regen potion to fully go off, but... I'd kick myself if I found another potion after this combat and couldn't take it. We are taking a lot of damage for a deck that is supposed to be all defense. It's too much damage, too little defense. Don't take damage, just take defense. Don't... Piercing Whale is good defense. I can't. They they will ramp faster than we will. I desperately want a rare relic, but no, I'm not doing that to me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So we still get to take a fair amount of damage here. I was worried we wouldn't. Dangerous. Okay. 12, 12, 9, 21. The problem is, if I wait for the poison, at the end of my turn, I will take the 12 damage from Constriction and I will die. So I've got 10 damage locked up here. So the maximum damage that I can deal this turn is the 21, 31, 31 on top of that is lethal, right? But if I don't defend, I'm dead. I can try and use Noxious Fumes as an energy pump by playing it and hoping it hits a Bouncing Flask. I have to play Dodge and Roll, right? Because if I don't play Dodge and Roll, I don't through li uh, live through the Constriction. So I have to play Dodge and Roll, I have to play Strike, and then that Noxious Fumes has to hit the furthest left Bouncing Flask here. Still just got enough. Deflect. Need the defense. I, I will take basically any defense now offered to me. I am terrified. Backflip. As well as that uh, block potion. And I'll take the speed potion. Now... Rest for safety here. Go one more space. Hopefully I find an ancient artifact. I don't. Another footwork is okay, but it still takes the setup to build it and use it. It's pro like it might just be another deflect. It is... I just need defensive cards. Like, clearly I don't have enough because too many times recently I've drawn hands, there's no defensive cards, and I just have to take the incoming damage. Upon pick up, choose the skill started to combat that in your opening hand. Uh, we can put bullet time in our opening hand, and that just guarantees our opening hand is, like, full value. It's kind of garbage to do this turn, though, right? So I well laid plans it. Couldn't avoid this fight. Reminder, no way to avoid the combat. Here, in particular, at least. I think we hold it for another turn. Ooh, after image, footwork. Start playing some defensive cards. Lovely. We'll even get a doppelganger out. Some extra draw next turn. Because I could full defend this turn, and it's not particularly important if you're dealing damage that turn, that definitely seemed correct to me. And this is... 
an obvious turn. I probably save the Piercing Whale for a later turn, though. Now, unfortunately, the enemy just did 5x3 twice in a row, so I know that they're not doing it next turn. They can't. But holding the Piercing Whale will have a good impact on the next time they do decide to do the 5x3. Straight up incredible right there. That is to say, the mummified hand hitting one of the cost reduced ones. Okay, the enemy still hasn't done a 45. I am so appreciative about that because otherwise I would have had to play the block potion in this combat. I'll just like piercing whale and a deadly poison. Enemy does no damage and they are mega wicked poisoned. Throw a catalyst out there and we do not have the kill. Because the enemy can't take that damage this turn. Mm -hmm. I could have played the Crippling Cloud to lower the incoming damage, but I still think I would have had to ultimately play that turn, basically. Because Crippling Cloud is very expensive for no block, right? So weakness, a reduction of 25%. 25% on 45 is, in this game's mathematics, like 12, 11. Whereas a block was blocking me for 10. So it was twice as expensive for one more block. And actually, not even one more block, right? Because playing two normal defends is two triggers of after image, whereas Krypton Cloud is not. I stand by that turn. I was mistaken to have made it that quickly, no doubt. But I stand by that turn. That's how that should have gone. Skill potion at the side of each combat apply one vulnerable to all enemies. I would consider the Cloak and Dagger literally just as a defense carrying card if it wasn't for the fact that the Time Eater is our final boss. Footwork I could also consider, but the more footworks I put in the deck, the more I'm diluting the deck of the defensive cards that I need early to prevent myself from dying. I would have previously said there's no such thing as too many footworks. Apparently there is, <laughs> there is such a thing. Because we have almost died far too many times for my particular tastes. Come on, very lucky draw of Corpse Explosion. Eh, it's not really necessary. We've got this. And now we wait. That was a pretty good combat. That catalyst does desperately need to be upgraded though. Second speed potion. Okay, we'll take the backflip. Probably not the dash though. Whispering voices in the back of our head. Writhe chunking up our opening hand is really bad because of the bullet time. Also, having neutralizing bullet time in the opening hand is anti-synergistic, but each of them was the right decision at the time, in my opinion. That doesn't mean they were the right decision overall, though. Retrospect and hindsight, sir. Uh, that's... it's good. That's that quote, right? Retrospect and hindsight, they're pretty good. Was hoping for a... Yeah, a turn like this would have been nice. Piercing Whale is a pretty good hold here. I know I don't get to hold a card this turn, but it would have been.
Well, definitely going to have to change the enemy's intent here. If you add a curse into my deck, I guess that's just how that goes. You don't. You don't significantly lower the amount of damage that you're dealing. Flex Bouncing and Catalysts. And we're safe this turn, and that's lethal. I was going to say lethal next turn, but apparently it's lethal this turn. Ancient Potion! Yes! Okay, Speed Potion plus Ancient Potion gives us the five... Do dodge and roll, obviously. Deflect, obviously. Uh, this gives me the five decks that I need at the start of the combat. This is exactly why I picked up the Speed Potion earlier, by the way. Uh, this is going to give me the five decks that I need at the start of the combat. I had to rest there. Yes, that does mean that I don't end up with the card that I wanted, which was the Catalyst upgrade, but I think we'll be fine. Well, Lake Plans holds Bullet Time this turn because Bullet Time doesn't save me any energy to play. So Ancient, then Speed, gets that upgrade. We'll play Well-Aid Plans and Noxious Fumes. Hell, we'll even play Piercing Whale. It's a good play this turn. Weaken the enemy. Take no damage. Sweet. So I can use Bullet Time to play six cards next turn. If I do that, then I will trigger the enemy's ability. And in fact, I will be doing that then. Great. 21 incoming damage. I've already got eight decks. I don't mean to appear cocky, but I think we have this one. Should have considered just holding a defensive card that turn, I think. I'll accept some damage here to get a little bit more of that out early. And I'll hold the Survivor as a singular large, very, very defensive card. So, Got to accept two damage in order to get a hell of a lot more out for myself. Catalyst just gets held until the right time. I'll play the dodge and roll here. Strike actually probably doesn't even matter. But Catalyst needs to be held until exactly the right time. Footwork backflip is the start of this turn 100% of the time. Ooh, Noxious Fumes, beautiful. Ooh, and it hit the backflip. I played two more cards this turn. That's my catalyst already burnt. Am I okay with that? No. I need to save my cards so that I can play two cards next turn defensively, probably. Not defensively. Okay, so whatever poison I can generate. It's probably... You know what? It's going to be deflect, then doppelganger, just to run out the clock on that turn. We'll retain the catalyst. Get all of our extra cards and extra draw this turn. Great. Let's start with deflect, backflip. I'm thinking bouncing blast, corpse explosion, and catalyst. So next turn, the enemy is going to purge. All I have to do is about 20 damage this turn. Oh my god, that'll do it. That's the time it down. That's our Ascension 17 victory with the Silent. That was really, really close of a run. There were multiple different points in that run where I had a unique or niche or difficult decision to make that just so happened to be just enough. Just enough just enough to get us through 1404 all right so that's the silent now on ascension 18 for the moment my name has been rhapsody the name of the game has been slayed this by hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time